Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Grace Holland. When you think of North Carolina's iconic buildings, you likely think of the Biltmore House. It's a symbol of Gilded Age excess and luxury, and you may be surprised to learn it owes its location, construction, and years of its operation to black men and women who lived in that area. WREL News anchor Gerald Owens has a special connection to this story. Gerald, thanks for joining me today. I've been looking forward to talking to you about this since you told me about it last month. <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure. Um, yeah, we have a connection. I, I'd always known that my family owned part of the land upon which Biltmore sits, but it was one, it was one of those things that we talked about years ago and just never came back up. I was touring the mansion over the holidays with my brother and his wife, and there's a placard in the basement of a man named William Logan who was the foreman on the construction of the Biltmore House. And it also mentioned, and I saw the, where the photo came from, was a woman named Viola Owens Turner. Mm-hmm. And it clicked. I said, I've got to find out what the connection is. I right. never did any research on it. I just took it for granted, and that was it. Um, but uh, that's how I, I got it in my head that I wanted to find out more about this, and that's why we did the story. Gotcha. And so... In the story, you talk, you spend a lot of time talking about the Shiloh community. So how did that journey get you to Shiloh, and where is Shiloh? Yeah, Shiloh is in Asheville. Um, it's, uh, in fact, it, to, to understand this, you got to go back to old Shiloh. Right now, what exists is called New Shiloh. Mm-hmm. Old Shiloh was a community of um, a couple dozen black families uh, on the top of the mountain in Asheville. And the word is that uh, George Vanderbilt and his mother were visiting North Carolina. He was on horseback riding, riding through the, uh, the countryside and happened upon this vista. And he just, it blew him away. And, uh, you know, so he said, I've got to have that land. Mm. And the hard part about it, this whole thing is, how are you going to convince people who were just enslaved, many of them, 20 years before, to give up the first property they'd ever owned? Right. Uh, so it was, a, it was a monumental task that he had ahead of him. Yeah. And so who did you talk to for this story before we kind of get into how mm-hmm. he did all of that? Uh, we spoke to the curator over Biltmore, okay. uh, a woman named Anita White, who is a resident of New Shiloh uh, and a distant relative of mine, um, her brother, Spencer, uh, and also some researchers over at UNC Asheville. I also found out quickly in the early stages of this while, while planning this story um, UNC Asheville is doing a project on basically what they're doing is they're mapping family histories using gravestones and black black family histories mm-hmm. uh, in Western North Carolina, and they're working on this community and my family in particular. They had four families there. They had students. You're assigned to this family. You're assigned to that family. Well, there's a, a, a group of students assigned to the Owens family. And I thought that, that was so neat. I couldn't wait to talk to them. So yeah. I talked to one of those students, and I talked to the woman who's the head of that project, Dr. Ellen, Ellen Pearson. Wow, a lot of people with a lot of different kinds of expertise, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how did George Vanderbilt fi- get the people in Shiloh to sell that land to him? One of his representatives um, hired William Logan, I talked about. Mm-hmm. And William Logan, he was trusted in the community. He was a preacher. Um, he just he convinced them to sell. And not only, Vanderbilt offered them quite a bit of money, um, several times what they'd paid for it. So it was, an, it was almost too good to pass up, uh, except for one person. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one, right? <laughs> yes. One guy held out for about 10 years and finally sold. But, and it became quite, uh, not scandalous, but it became a big story in the Asheville area. Oh, really? You know, and the rumor was that he was offered anywhere from nine to $65,000 Back in the late 1900s, which was a king's, would be a king's ransom today, and he wouldn't sell. Yeah. And finally sold it for $2,000. Yeah. Wow. Um, let's take a quick break right there, and we'll be right back. Okay, so Gerald, you talked about how George Vanderbilt got these families to sell the land, and there was a holdout, and it, it took a lot of time. What happened to those Shiloh families after the Vanderbilts got that land? Well, the Vanderbilt, the Shiloh community had about 325 acres. George Vanderbilt bought 125,000. Wow. So it was a small part of it, but it was the main part of it because that's where the mansion is, is right where that Shiloh community was. 
And if you've been to Biltmore, you know there's the mansion and the winery and the horse, uh, you know, the stables and that kind of thing. That's Shiloh Land, or it was. Um, he moved the family, moved them all, uh, about a mile away because many of them were going to work on the construction. So it was about a mile away as a crow flies, so they can still get back and forth uh, to and from work easily. Uh, so he moved them. He moved their homes, their church, the graves. He uprooted all the people there and moved them over to New Shiloh, which exists today. Mm-hmm. And what can you tell me about your family members' connection? I know mm-hmm. um, in your story you talk a bit about Sylvester Owens and his role. Right. Yeah, Sylvester was born in New Shiloh right after the move. But um, his parents and grandparents and cousins and Anita's, uh, R- Logan, mm-hmm. William Logan is, is related to me. He married um, uh, a woman who is my direct ancestor. So that's kind of the, and my great-great-grandfather, Butler Owens, uh, lived in that community. And ironic about him, he actually served in the, for the Confederate Army in the Civil War Wow! Uh, as a cook. He was considered a... Um, um, a free man of color. He was he was half Indian, half white. Mm-hmm. That was his his makeup. So he uh, so he was in the uh, Civil War, um, and Butler's ancestors were all there in Shiloh. Many of them. Uh, so that's that's the connection there, the the, uh, the familial connection. Gotcha. And then what what did their his role at Beltmore become? Uh, now specifically, uh, many of them worked there. Many of the Owens family and the White family and the. They, they worked at Biltmore in some fashion. My uncle Sylvester, who's my grandfather's first cousin, was the groundskeeper there for 44 years. He became the head groundskeeper. and But prior to him becoming the head groundskeeper, he worked with a man named Chauncey Beadle, who was the head's ground, head groundskeeper. He died. Mm-hmm. That's when Sylvester took over. But Chauncey and, and Sylvester would travel the country looking for different species of azaleas and bring them back to Biltmore. If you've ever seen the Azalea Gardens at Biltmore, they're fast, they're wonderful, one of the best in the country, if not the world. And that was always Sylvester's dream uh, and Chauncey's dream. So when Chauncey died, uh, the, the, the owner or the person who ran Biltmore at that time said, we want to keep him on, make him head gardener. He knows more about it than anybody else. So he basically oversaw m- most of the plantings at Biltmore, not just the Azaleas, but that was his passion. Wow, and I bet that's a lot of plants and flowers to oh have to take gosh, care yes. of if it's not even just the azaleas. That's really impressive. Right. It really was. Yeah. Um, so you talked a little bit about UNC Asheville's project that they're working on and how they're kind of uh, each student is kind of picking a family and, and working. So what is sort of the ultimate goal of that project? What is the, I guess, the... Um, push to keep these people remembered like? They're going to create a database mm-hmm. where anyone can go and get information about these families which have been largely forgotten. Uh, and that's the goal, to make sure that these communities aren't forgotten, that, uh, that their importance is remembered um, and, is, and people can find it. Um, one of the things in this cemetery, uh, the New Shiloh Cemetery, a lot of the bodies that were moved weren't marked. Mm-hmm. So they're basically just a piece of stone in the ground. Yeah. And they're couple of dozen of those. So, you know, you, you go walk by it and you maybe look inside. There's some of the big headstones with all the word names and dates and all that kind of thing. But there are a lot of people there. They, they don't even know who they are. And also, um, I learned that there could still be some bodies over at Biltmore. They didn't get them all. Oh, man. Because if you look in certain parts of it, you'll see the indentations, which would denote, you know, a partial graveyard. So um, <laughs> the story is pretty interesting. Yeah, it sounds like it's just going to keep going and going. Yeah. What was it like for you with your family connections to to go there? And I'm sure you're kind of now seeing Biltmore through a new light now, knowing that that's old Shiloh. Mm -hmm. Um, But even visiting new Shiloh, going through that cemetery, what was that like for you? Uh, It was it was it was peaceful. And um, just because I had met Sylvester before as a kid, Mm -hmm. just like my grandfather and a spitting image of my dad. Um, but uh, I'd met him a long, long time ago. And there were some other people whose names on those gravestones I'd met. Um, I had a, a cousin, Tempe. I, she was probably 80 years old when I saw her as a kid, but she was cousins with my grandfather, and she had a candy store down the street. Uh, it was Actually, she sold candy out of her house, but as a kid, you think, let's go down to Tempe's and get some candy from the store. <laughs> right. Um, I saw her grave there, um, and I saw a lot of familiar names. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because until now, we had – and I think a lot of people are like this. You keep in touch with your family, and 
maybe the next level, i.e. cousins, first cousins. But most people don't go far beyond that. Yes. They just kind of stay right there with what they know. And if they learn more information later, that's great. Mm-hmm. But um, but that's that was my experience. I just felt like I was where I needed to be at home. And the, the Biltmore connection, I had always felt a little connection to Biltmore based on what I knew. Yeah. What, even though I didn't know much of it at all until until now. Yeah, so I'm sure that just made it even stronger then. Yeah. What's the big takeaway that you want people to hear in this story and, and sort of the changes that the Shiloh community went through? Um, put yourselves in their position. Um, someone approaches you, a white man who you've never met, wants to buy you out of your land <laughs> that you just acquired a short time ago and uproot your whole family, um, dig up the graves and move the people, your loved ones that you buried there. Um, I, can't, I can't personally fathom how they were able to do that, regardless of the money. But, you know, I don't know if maybe they felt compelled. Maybe they, they didn't think that they had a choice. But I know they were treated well, and I know that they were paid well. Um, but I want people to remember that there is a group of people that made a sacrifice so we can all enjoy Biltmore House. That's not why Biltmore built the mansion, but that's what it's become. Right. Well, and it, some of that land, didn't it also become Smoky Mountains Park, I think? Yes. So Out of that 125,000 acres, he sold all but 8,000. That's what, what the land, the estate has now. Yeah. So he sold well over 100,000 acres back to the state and the federal government. Yeah. So in a roundabout way, here we are all enjoying Shiloh. Yep. Because of what they did, <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Well, Well, thank you so much, Gerald. I really appreciate you sharing this story with us. And thank you so much for listening to the WREL Daily Download. We've been showcasing Black History Month stories every week this month. You can go back and listen to those or our other Daily Download episodes on WREL.com, the WREL News app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else you listen. Follow the show so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for listening. 